All right, a very good morning to you. This is Click Niger and the show is Youth Assembly. My name is Sylvia Ishewe. Today on Youth Assembly, we'll be looking at the effectiveness of online school in Nigeria since the COVID-19 lockdown began. Now, Nigerian schools have remained closed since the federal government ordered the immediate closure of all educational institutions on or before the 26th of March, 2020. This step was taken as a cautionary measure aimed at curtailing the spread of coronavirus pandemic in the country. Now, since that time, many private schools and public schools have adopted the online mode of learning to keep up with the demand of the time. Okay. All right, so this, um, this was taken, a step taken by schools uh, to actually keep up with the demands of the time. Schools are not the only places of learning. They, are also, they also provide social protection, nutrition, health services, emotional support for the most vulnerable, the children. Now the COVID-19 pandemic poses an enormous risk to the health and safety of learners, teachers, parents, school administ administrators, education practitioners, and the wider community. Now today on Youth Assembly, we focus on how effective the online school has been in Nigeria since the COVID-19 pandemic began or since the COVID-19 lockdown. So I have joining me online, Mrs. Emanuela Wabufor. She is the Managing Director, Noble Heights Academy, Abuja. Welcome. Thank you. I also have with me, Mr. Israel Oloya Day. Mr. Israel is a school teacher. Welcome, Mr. Israel. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. so. Um, how has it been so far as a school owner, Mrs. Emanuela, um, going online and teaching your children? Um, first things first, I must say thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, with regards to how it's been, uh, in three simple words, it's been challenging. Hmm. However, just like the normal, uh, just like human beings, we are able to adapt to any situation we find ourselves in. Uh, in the beginning, it was, um, it was quite tough. It was tough on the school management. It was tough on teachers. And of course, tough on children. Tough on the, children, on the parents as well, because uh, they are the ones that have to take up the position of being teachers, physical teachers at home. So uh, as time went on, we adjusted. Everyone has uh, come to get used to the new normal. Um, and um, the online learning has also evolved and children are beginning to get used to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, would you say um, that it is a more intense kind of um, learning or a, a better way of learning than the physical type of learning in the classrooms? Um, well, this, considering, okay, Speaking for my school, it's okay. a nursery primary secondary school. So uh, this is where we're dealing, the school, we're dealing with minors. Mm. So that's under 18, under 18, under 18 year olds. Under 18 year old. So, um, and most times part of learning and development comes with social interaction. Mm -hmm. So having the online learning take place, uh, I would not say, I wouldn't say that is the best because um, you, you, you are not, there's no physical interaction with your teachers, with your peers. So for now, it's not. And uh, we are trying to manage the best we can. Right. I would not say that it's, it's, it's better than the brick and mortar style of learning. That's the uh, daily go, uh, going to school and all that. It's not the best because there are several other aspects of learning, several other uh, parts of the, school, of the school day that you learn from that you cannot get from the online learning. Okay, thank you so much. Well, Mr. Israel, your teacher, what are some of the challenges you've faced so far teaching online? All right, thank you very much once again for having me. Uh, like uh, the lady said, what I'm going to say, we are still in the process of uh, adaptation. Mm -hmm. The challenges has been, one of the major challenges that I'm going to categorically say is in the side of our evaluation. We are teaching, but uh, we can't actually say we are evaluating the way we are supposed to evaluate. Mm -hmm. In class, you ask questions, you give assignments, you know. 
In this case, although we give assignments, yeah. even in class, in the online class, sometimes you ask a question and some students will just rush over to Google and just type blah, 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 and just get the answer and just post it to you. You can actually, you know, evaluate the student the way you are supposed to evaluate them. So that is one major challenge. Then another major challenge is internet connection. You will agree with me that internet connection in Nigeria is not that okay. Yes. Uh, and also power supply. Uh, yes. Some students will come online I was, and they will just type, uncle, my phone is about to go on. Mm, in yes. a class where you have 40, 50 students and you have about 5, 10 coming to say, oh, uncle, my phone will switch off. So I may have to leave the class. So evaluation has been a challenge challenge power supply has been a challenge and also internet connection has yes. been a very big challenge no oh, okay uh, so i've i've seen children on in in the online class classes but the kind of distractions that come in also i uh, i i i tend to wonder how do you people cope as teachers or handle all of the distractions these children are at home um being distracted by maybe uh, phones, uh, TV, and the likes, and the, the noise coming from the background. And so how do you handle this kind of distractions, or what do you do to make sure distractions are minimal when interacting with your children, Mrs. Emanuela? Uh, I would say, like I said earlier, we are still in the process of adapting. Yeah. This, is, um, this is a situation where we have to preempt and inform the parents prior to the classes going on, telling them um, that, um, that we need a quiet time, set good set of good internet connectivity, if any, and uh, av just availability with the child to make sure that the child learns what he or she is supposed to learn at that time. So we try to work, we work hand in hand with the parents mm -hmm. to make sure that they provide all the, a suitable environment for the kids. Because if we don't have the environment suitable, it's going to be quite chaotic. And not just on the child's part, but every other person in the uh, uh, online learning environment at that time. The teacher will try to be speaking, but then um, because of the interference from the background, children and ev every other person will find it really difficult to, to concentrate. So we try to um, involve parents as much as possible. That dear parents, uh, we are having our Zoom classroom by so so and so time. Please make available the following. So we try to do that. Okay, okay. Talking about feedback, our uh, parents also. Our uh, parents uh, have their own challenges working as yes. partners in these online classes. And so, yes. um, how is the feedback mechanism? How well are, are, are your, is your school, or as a teacher also, I'll come to you, um, Mr. Israel, but how well as a school owner do you get feedbacks and from parents and um, try to adjust or make it better, a better experience for the children or of course the parents? Um, so far, so good. We, uh, I would also say part of the challenges uh, one of the challenges, in fact, I would say major challenges, um, it, it comes from the parents. Mm. What do I mean? You know, when you have busy parents, parents are also um, uh, ad adjusting to the whole COVID situation. It's not just schools, everybody around the world. So they also have their own uh, challenges they are facing and trying to tell them that, okay, why don't you do this? It's a bit, um, it's a bit out of the normal schedule for them. And some it's of them a bit, are working, uh, actually. Some of them them. get to go to work, yes. so they don't get yes. to supervise so, the children. Exactly. What so work? what we do, the method we've uh, adopted in my school, we have pre-recorded classes. We consider parents that are working. We consider children, um, parents that are working, parents that parents with not just one child, but maybe up to four or five kids, and maybe they are sharing one phone or maybe they're sharing one laptop or two tablets. Mm -hmm. So we try to put all those into consideration and we tell them that, okay, we have these pre-recorded classes, we have this quiz. At the end of the week, we would want to see that you've done this job. We want to see that the child has listened to, has done this and has attempted this quiz. That is how we try to measure our, our progress by seeing that the child and the parents, the child has done the quiz that has been set up on the app. So with that, we know that, okay, by the end of this week, on Friday, oh, so-so and so, so-so and so 
they've attempted this, that means that they were able to do this. And we then try to give feedback to the parents. Oh, dear parents, we noticed that this person is not here. What happened? So we try to do it. We try to factor in the kids. We try to factor in the size of the family, uh, uh, the parents' availability as well, you know, before um, um, coming up with ours. Okay. Uh, all right, Mr. Israel, what kind of feedbacks have you gotten so far from parents, from children um, that you have uh, been teaching so far online? Yeah, the, the, the feedback has been encouraging. Uh, some parents are calling in, are sending messages and uh, letting us know that we are doing a great job. Having said that, I also add that uh, in the area of but, you know, getting feedback from these students, we have not really been doing well. We've not really been doing well as regards to that. What, what you do know, you mean? What we do in my school, mm. what we do in my school is that we use Google Classroom. And Google Classroom is not an audiovisual platform, you know. So we set up quiz, we set up assignments, and we give it a time frame yeah. that the students are supposed to, you know, react yeah. to these things. And uh, what you discover most of the time is that uh, you see that some students will respond, some students attend to this, why some don't attend to it. When you ask them, they will tell you that there is no one to guide them. You know, the parents are going to work now. Most of the parents are very, very busy. And this student does not, you know, they don't, they, they, they don't know how to, you know, manipulate this thing and, you know, you, you know do it by themselves. They need the attention of their parents. But you see that most parents go to work every morning, come back late in the night, you know, repeat the circle five days of the week. So the feedback has not been encouraging on behalf of, you know, on the part of the student because most of the assignment, most of the quiz that we ask them to do, a lot of them don't do it. And also the exam class, the SS3, in fact, yeah. like in my class, I have 45 students in SS3. Mm -hmm. When we started the online class, you know, all of them always come to class. They interact, they are eager because we're doing revision. But now, as of, as of yesterday, the class I had with them, I had less than 20 in the class out of 45 students. What so happened? you can imagine that the more of the students. Oh, I cancellation of the work on behalf of the government, or maybe. They are just tired. Some will just say, Uncle, can the school just resume? Yes. I've heard that to class. Yes, I've heard that. You're trying to engage them. Yeah. Yes. You're trying to engage them. But what they are just responding to is, Uncle, when are we resuming? So you see that the morale of the students are, you know, dwindling day by day. Yeah. And also, the yeah. parents are not there for them. And they can't do it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, now, now that you mentioned, you know, um, some schools adopted the online system from that match, from that time, um, the school, uh, the federal government said um, schools should go on a compulsory lockdown, the 26th of March. After like that two weeks break, yes. they came back and they've been on. Yes. So uh, this this uh, this um, feedback you're giving now that children, the morale is down and they are tired of it. Uh, uh, <laughs> what do you think? schools need to do, Mrs. Manuela, to improve on that aspect, not to overburden the children and also the parents who are teaching at all. Thank you very much. Um, first things first, I'll say that, um, you know, this, this has really hit every angle of the, of the economy, not just in Nigeria, but worldwide. Uh, I call my sisters abroad. They also complain of the same thing. Um, there's something that's called burnout. One thing with children, if uh, most of them get motivated when they come to school and they meet their friends, they meet that teacher they like, they meet that environment that they're used to. And uh, recently, even my own kids, like whenever, they, almost every day now, oh, mommy, I want to go back to school. Mommy, I, what was this uh, uh, COVID-19? You know, so they keep asking me and I have to keep answering them. Now, with regards to what schools can do, for now, we are hoping on the federal government to make sure that um, to finish up with their uh, meetings and to call schools back because every other sector, I believe, has, um, has resumed mm -hmm. apart from education uh, with valid reasons. I mean, ob obvious reasons that we really cannot uh, let the schools, let children go back in because of the peculiarity of the situation. 
But for now, we have to continue what we're doing, encouraging. Right now, our method has to be some sort of mentorship, encouraging parents, encouraging children, because it's not easy on anyone. It's not easy on the parents that will have to buy data, that would have to sit with the kids, that would have to make sure that they do their homework and they don't suffer from brain drain. So you have to, we have to do a lot of encouragement, a lot of, a lot of meetings, a lot of uh, motivation on the teacher's part. We have to motivate them, cheer them on while listening, hoping that the federal government lifts the lockdown and mm -hmm. schools will come back to normal. So um, for now, what we're doing, uh, uh, we try to motivate everybody. We try to make it uh, in a way that everyone would have to, the children, the children will learn, do their quiz, yeah. submit it, we cheer them on, give a little break and continue. Okay. So, so far so good. Yes, this is what we've been doing. All right, thank you so much, Mrs. Emanuel. But over to you, Mr. Israel. Uh, Mr. Israel, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so there are concerns that online schooling would widen the educational inequality between students in private schools, students in public schools, rich students, uh, students from, well, not so rich uh, uh, backgrounds. What do you think the people in charge of education uh, should do to choose, uh, to make sure that they close the inequality gap uh, so that students from both uh, spheres of life can benefit from the online system? Okay, I think oh, there has been, like you mentioned, there's been a very wide gap. You know, we have some students that are extremely brilliant and some are just trying to catch up. We have students that come from a very rich home and some are just, you know, trying to catch up as well. I think what the government needs to do is to make sure, you know, to formulate some policies in, uh, that, 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 that will help the parents now the parents that are not doing well, maybe financially, so as to make them, you know, earn more. You can see that there is a widespread poverty in the land. Mm -hmm. Let me t t tell you, in my school, since we started the online uh, uh, learning, the parents have not paid 50 cover. Wow. And we are doing it because that, that all fingers are not equal. If we ask them to pay, some parents will pay. Why some will not be able to pay? So in order, you know, for us not to, you know, make some parents feel bad and stuff like that. So we have to do it. My school has been doing it free of charge because we understand the situation. That is us doing our own part. The oh, government right. too can also do their own part by formulating policies that will help eradicate poverty in the line. Okay, uh, I will come back to the, the to the part of um, teachers getting their pay um, and how it affects. But we also have here um, Linda, Mrs. Linda Okamwe. He is, she is also a head teacher uh, from, a, from a school right here in Abuja. Thank you so much for joining us, Mrs. Linda. Thank you so much. All right, Thank so you. it's Youth Assembly, and yes, we are talking about how effective the online school system has been in Nigeria since the COVID-19 lockdown. As a head teacher, who have teachers? What are the challenges that you have faced uh, from your own end? Actually, um, the online thing is relatively new in Nigerian educational system, and um, it's hmm. okay. All right. Uh, is interfering. This is one of the things we're talking about, one of the challenges, right? Okay, when exactly. you come back here, we'll, we'll, we'll get your feedback uh, or your contribution, Mrs. Linda. But, you know, um, Mr. Israel, you talked about teachers not, or parents not paying for the online school that their children attend. How does it affect, uh, affect teachers' morale? And for how some do they parents, it? it's my be challenge. It's okay. that simple, and some. Why are Go ahead, Mr. Israel. All right, you know, uh, it, it has not been easy mm. because, you know, the teachers to ask to keep body and souls together, we need money. But I want to specifically commend, I mean, commend the PTA of my school. They've been doing very, very wonderful. I don't know if I'm allowed to mention their name, the name of the school. No, no, but, no. Uh, <laughs> since, since uh, you know, 
the parents have not paid for any online uh, learning, but the PTA, out of their magnanimity, has been doing something for the teacher wow. every month since the lockdown. So they've been one, you know, every, at the end of the month, they drop something in our account to say thank you for the good work you are doing, and everybody is happy. So it's not an issue because parents are not paying. We are still getting motivated. In. Uh, all right, Mrs. Ibaduela, what do you think? Uh, how are teachers getting motivated and morale boosted to keep teaching online? Uh, despite some people okay, not Okay, um, yes. Uh, you know, when the, lockdowns, uh, when the lockdown started, we thought it was going to be a two-week thing. And uh, we carried on. And then from two weeks is now like four months, you know. And um, at some point, initially, we started, we started our online learning for free as a school, as a private organization, we started it. We said, okay, oh, don't worry, they'll soon lift it. But at some point, we had to call everyone. Um, we started, we had to start charging parents. We charged our parents 5,000, something little as compared with um, co relative, relative little, relatively little compared with what we're giving. So, um, of course, as God will have it, all our parents, most of our parents subscribed. And that is what we've been using to pay our staff. And everyone so far has been happy with, with the arrangement and believing God that things will lift. Of course, the payment is not, um, the 5,000 being paid, it's, it's nothing compared to their salary. But right now, everyone is getting something at the end of the month mm -hmm. just to, to hold body and soul together. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Linda, yeah. are you back now? Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> I think Network is not her friend today. But let me continue with you, uh, Mr. Israel. As a teacher, what are the positive impacts of the new learning process uh, to you? Uh, well, the, we want to hear some of those positive impacts that the new learning process has brought and how the government or the educational um, system, educational body, um, can uh, improve on the good part of it. Oh, one of the greatest positive impact I would say this thing has brought is uh, making all of us now computer literate. Uh -huh. It has opened us to a lot of possibilities on the internet. Yes. I've been a computer literate before now, but uh, in the process of you know, searching the internet, looking for how to improve myself in order to adapt to the situation on ground, I've learned a whole lot more. And also on the part of the students, the student too, they're exposed to online learning now. They're exposed to the internet now. Yes. Sometimes some students cannot, you know, be on the internet for five minutes without checking other jargons. But now they are learning, you know, to be focused on whatever they are doing on the internet. In the computer room in my school, when you allow students to come into the computer room and you don't monitor them, before you know, they start opening some other website that you don't mm -hmm. want to have them to. But now, since the online, you know, since the online learning started, students have been learning to be focused on one particular thing at a time on the internet. So that is a good aspect, I would say that. And also the teachers too, we've been learning a whole lot more. We've been opening up ourselves to a lot of possibility that the internet has to offer. Mm, wow. Well, <laughs> uh, true, true talk. Uh, Mrs. Lida, can you hear us now? Can we get your feedback or your contribution? Just, uh... Wow. Well, we move on to Mrs. Emanuela. Uh, now, now he has mentioned some of the good things that has come out of good, uh, online learning. But how would you rate schools' knowledge and awareness of online language, online rules uh, of engagement, and even ethics? Sorry, I don't. I didn't get that. What how would you, you rate that? schools engaging online? Their awareness of the online language, online rules. Yeah. And also the engagement, online rules engagement and ethics of online teaching. Uh, right now that the online learning has come to say, I like what Mr. Israel said, that uh, a lot of children, a lot of teachers have learned and understood the importance of um, uh, internet and how to use and navigate the internet. Before, it wasn't that, it wasn't that widespread around the country. 
And um, right now, as it is, everyone has adapted, almost everybody, and everybody's beginning to adapt to, to the situation. So with that, um, if we can add it to the curriculum, because when COVID, God willing, when COVID is over, the, the online learning will still be here. We hope it will still be here, and we hope that it will, um, it will get better and better when we now start to incorporate uh, blended learning. Blended learning is when you do the physical classroom learning and online learning at the same time. Okay. So um, with that, and once we start that, we are going to start teaching online ethics, online safety to kids and to parents. How do you, how do you ensure that your child is safe on the internet? How to stay safe as a, as a teenager, as a child on the internet? So uh, I believe that schools should uh, include it in one way or the other, in the curriculum, in their scheme, ICT scheme or thereabouts, so that um, everyone will get to understand it, understand that this is here to stay and that online learning, we have to take precautions when we are getting into the cyberspace. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mrs. Linda, can, we, can you hear me now? Okay, uh, so now that you mentioned curriculum, uh, it takes me back to a discussion I had with some parents where uh, they are of the opinion that... Yes, I can hear you. I've always oh. heard you. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. So you were talking about the challenges and, uh, and uh, the effectiveness of online learning so far. Um, you can continue uh, on you. that line of thoughts. Go ahead. Okay, um, the challenge is, is that um, Nigerians, they are not used to online learning. So it's like trying to uh, do things you are not used to. So it's affecting the whole uh, uh, school teachers, right? public pupils, and uh, students across the nation. How are they? going to um, uh, um, of the online learning. Because if you look at Nigeria, majority of people in Nigeria, they are, they are not really rich. They are not rich, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So they are all trying to um, uh, um, survive. So when you say online learning, you find out that it's strictly for the rich and not even the average Nigerian as it is, the way COVID has positioned the country. So lot, all these schools saying that they charge for free, they, do, they, they render services for free, they are still not able to cover all they needed to cover if we have to. No, actually, we don't even need to cover everything, but at least we need to cover almost everything. You understand? So now, a lot of children are suffering because they are at home, their parents cannot afford, some, some parents, majority of the families in Nigeria cannot afford a smartphone. Okay. Okay, so we, we get your point. Talk more of uh, engaging in online learning. Uh, and some people like struggle for one for have a child in basic four, a child in basic three, and a child in basic one, and you just have one phone or one laptop. It's a big challenge. So I, um, my suggestion is that the government should do something, maybe subsidize the money for all these uh, gadgets so that it can, be, it can be accessible to the rich and the poor. And also the network provider should go a long way to reduce their, their tariff on all these um, services they render so that people can be able to assess them and use them for the benefits of their own. Um, the, uh, other aspects of life. So, you see, the challenges is not just on the children, it's also on the teacher. Now, look at an average teacher today in this COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. Most of us private teachers were not receiving anything at all. And some of us were just receiving, let me say, 20% of our usual salary. You understand me? Mm -hmm. Now, you're going to buy for your phone or for your laptop to send a video or to engage your student in visual classroom you find out that it's not really, really easy. Some of them are opting out because they, can't, they cannot continue. Even with the stipend they are being paid, it's not enough. You need to feed your family. So it goes a long way, talking about the data, talking about the gadget, talking about 
the fee. So I don't know, but Nigeria government really need to do something because with this online learning that we need to go into in a haste that we are not prepared for is crippling our educational. Thank um, you. Thank uh, you so um, much, Mrs. Our, Lika. Valid points made. Yes, some students are not benefiting at, at all from the learning that is going on online. They've been just at home, sitting down and just waiting for physical school to resume. Uh, but Mrs. Emanuela, yeah. gonna... yes, yes. Uh, speaking about um, the curriculum, um, some people are of the opinion that the curriculum should um, change as learning style have changed. Uh, what you taught yeah. physically in classroom shouldn't be what you should be teaching on, um, online. Well, what do you make of that? Yeah. And how can the um, when, when you talk about curriculum, you talk about a lot of things. You talk about the whole school. There's something called hidden curriculum and unhidden curriculum. Now, um, the scheme of work, there are some, all of them can be taught online. At the same time, all of them can be taught in the classroom. Now, it depends on the school. It depends on the environment, on what to do. Prior to the COVID era, my school has taken online learning seriously. We have our lessons and we've exposed, we've been exposing our children to taking their exams via the computer, computer-based testing. We give them assignments and sometimes they submit it via uh, uh, online. So right now, um, how do we, how do we uh, uh, make it possible that the curriculum, everything is not taught in the class? I believe, I'm of the opinion that at the end of the COVID lockdown, that a lot of things are going to change. Now, it boils down to the uh, ERC, the NERDC, to make sure that the new scheme of work uh, um, accommodates these situations, these um, conditions, for example, the online learning, the offline learning. But like what Ms. Linda said, Mrs. Linda, that you really cannot, when forming a curriculum, you have to consider a lot of things. You and I would agree that um, over 80% of the Nigerian children cannot access um, um, online, uh, cannot access the internet. Even the remaining 20, for example, the internet connectivity has been really epileptic. So it's something that we're going to consider. We're going to really put everything on, on ground. We're going to throw everything on the table and and consider a lot of things before coming up with a workable solution. All right, uh, thank you. We're running out of time, but let me hear from Mr. Israel. Uh, what are your final thoughts? How can some of these challenges or all of it be, be solved or made uh, better for online system of schooling to work better in Nigeria? Mr. Israel. They can, you know, they can make sure that all these gadgets are subsidized. They yeah. can produce specialized gadgets for learning apart from phone. They can produce a specialized gadget like a, a tablet and the rest of them. And they can subsidize it so that every family can get it. That is what the, 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 gov the government can do. Uh, all right. I feel like uh, there should be, this is a shout out, a special shout out to all of you. You're doing amazing works as, as teachers and school owners and also as parents. Uh, but yes, uh, Mrs. Linda, uh, can you say a word of encouragement, uh, encouragement to a teacher today <laughs> and to yourself <laughs> as we wrap up? Okay. Network is not our friend. But yes, <laughs> it's all That's good. part of what we're talking about. <laughs> yes, uh, but um, Mrs. Emanuela, you can actually take it from here. Um, I would say- Just to all teachers out there. I would say everyone should give themselves a pat on the back because um, we're dealing with we're in an environment that is not encouraging at all. You know, you and I would agree that the government, I hate, I hate, to, I hate to throw blames, but yes, the gov if the government was doing their job, the private industry, the private education industry wouldn't be thriving and booming. So that boils down to the fact that the government really needs to do a lot, a lot more, really needs to call in the stakeholders involved. What, what, what do I, I mean? Say okay. No, go Hello? ahead. Just wrap up. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Government really needs to involve the stakeholders. And what do I mean by that? The teachers, the head of schools, heads of schools, 
to make sure that a solution, something, something workable, something feasible for our environment comes up. Because um, if you don't, if you make your, if you, if you make your policies without involving those on ground, it really doesn't make sense. Right. So with this, I would like to encourage the teachers. I would like to encourage fellow school owners. It hasn't been easy, but we, are keep, we keep doing it. And I must say we are doing well. I must say well done. And I must say we have to continue against all odds. And I believe that this too shall pass. Yes, definitely. COVID-19 will pass. Thank you so much, yeah. uh, Mrs. Emanuela Wabufora. She is a school yeah, owner uh, right here in Abuja. And Mr. Israel Oloyode, school teacher extraordinary. <laughs> well done, sir. And uh, we well are also joined by uh, Mrs. Linda Okabwe, head teacher in one of the schools in Abuja also. Thank you so much. It's been amazing having you today on Youth Assembly. Well, Youth Assembly will make your return okay. next week, Monday at uh, 10 a.m. West African time. My name is Sylvia Ishime, and the show was put together by Asma Usani. Continue to listen to us on www.clickniger.net. Stay tuned for more right here on Click Niger. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.